Hi everyone, my name is Chris and welcome back to another gear overview video. Today we're we'll taking a look at this bad boy here. This is the vertical envelopment pack from First Beer. Uh, now start off full disclosure, yeah, they sent me this just to you know show you guys to do a video on. So if you don't think those sort of videos are worth watching, if you don't think people are honest, that's fine, you know, feel free to click away. But anyway, that aside, I specifically asked First Beer to, to send me one of these over to take a look at um, after after SHOT Show this year uh, because of all the products they do this one to me stood out uh, of, of all the stuff I haven't tried yet this one stood out as being one that, that did something different that isn't really out out there on the market uh, you know, from other manufacturers and of all of their stuff that I've tried all the first big year I've tried I say this this one just it stood out to me as having that difference having that the ability to, to do something for you that you just can't really get anywhere else or I, I don't know of any other product that does quite the same thing as this. So as I say, it's called the Vertical Envelopment Pack. It comes with normal shoulder straps. These are just simple webbing straps. It wouldn't be really ideal for um, very long-term usage, going long distances, but they're secure, they're well-made, they work just fine. But I've purely put them on there for demonstration purposes. These aren't the idea behind the pack, really. The thing that made me want to give this a go and take a look at it is the fact that there are a lot of PALS mounted packs on the market, a lot of hit quite recently, um, especially the Haley Strategic one's been really popular, but they have a problem, they have a key problem. You can't get stuff that's PALS mounted on, onto the back of your plate carrier without, or your armor carrier or whatever, without taking all that off. And obviously if you've got armor in it, you've then not got armor on anymore. You need a teammate to get it for you or you're screwed. Now, obviously a lot of the time that's fine. You'll have someone who can do it for you, but, uh, I've seen it, you know, in situations, training, in recreational situations where people have these, these Molly Pals mounted small modular assault packs or whatever they're called or flat packs, whatever they are. And they just, they put loads of supplies that they need access to inside them and they can't get at them. There are definitely advantages to the Molly or Pals mounted packs. They keep the shoulder pocket area for the clear for the, for the butt of your rifle. They just slick everything up, less straps going across your body, which is always a plus. Um, and when you want to carry a small amount of kit, I can, you know, there's a lot of appeal to that. On the other hand, you've got a, a standard backpack, which is probably the option I'd prefer overall, because yes, you do have more straps getting in the way, but you can swing that around your back and actually get to the stuff yourself without necessarily needing someone to give you a hand. The, the VEP, pretty much designed to bring the best of both worlds, to be honest, in, in terms of a tactical pack when you're wearing some sort of armor or vest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my first beer strand hold plate carrier. Uh, I'm gonna take off these standard shoulder straps. I'm gonna rig this thing up onto the strand hog and I'm gonna just run through how it actually works. Okay, so here we've got our strand hog plate carrier. Now, when you buy the VEP, it will come with a shitload of fucking straps and bits and pieces and widgets and things that you won't initially probably understand. Um, first beer themselves did a video on setting this thing up, which I'll also link in the description. That's really fucking handy. Now, what you're going to do is you'll take off your stock shoulder straps. It comes with these Hypalon ones that have a small tube, first bit tube on them, or the, uh, the male part of it anyway. So you replace both shoulder straps. You add this section here, just at the end of your cummerbund near the, near the front panel, like so. You got them on both sides clips into the 612. Again, you've got the male section of a small first bit tube on there. Once you've got the carrier ready to accept the pack, you'll have the pack, you attach the top straps, which clip onto the carrier via the new carrier shoulder straps, just the same as the normal tubes do. So you've got an arrangement that looks like that. Then you take side straps on the pack, they go around to the tubes on the cummerbund. Again, just like, just like the tubes on the actual carrier itself. On a table, when you're not trying to show the camera, it's really, really easy. It takes about five seconds. It's not as horrendously awkward as I just made it look. You also get this thing which is called the rat strap because it's kind of like a rat's tail. It's just a strip of webbing with some hook on it. That goes over the top. And in my case, I just stick that onto my admin pouch. And then, uh, then you're assembled. So as you can see, what you've got 
is even with a hydration carrier on your plate carrier, you've now got a backpack mounted to your armor rig, which is not permanently attached to it. It is, it is free to move. Now, obviously you can cinch down these straps to, to make it tighter or looser, depending on how, what you've got in it, uh, how padded out, padded out it is, that sort of thing. And uh, when, once you've got it set up right, it won't flap around while you're actually moving. So just quickly run through the pouches that are visible at this point. So you've got, you've got a beaver tail of sorts, just made a mesh, elastic on there, attached with G-hooks. I'm not a fan of G-hooks. I think I've said this in other videos. Uh, when there's no tension on this beaver tail, these, when, when this actually moves around, these can just come out. There's nothing to stop them. I wish they just used side release buckles, to be honest. Um, all these little T pieces that they've got on here just through, through some PALS webbing. Um, but as long as, you, as long as there's stuff in there, it'll be fine. You can remove this and switch it to the other side with these webbing and elastic pieces. It's really adjustable. You can make this, this is as small as it goes and you can make this huge um, fit helmets, roll mats, uh, insulation layers, all that stuff, just stuff it in there. What, um, you know, waterproof jackets, that kind of thing. A small field of loop for your ID patches, um, IR fucking glint patches, whatever you want to use. Slash top, zip pocket. This one's quite deep, goes all the way to the bottom. Ah, nearly forgot. When you actually attach the shoulder straps, what, what it comes with is these little pieces. These wrap around between the plate carrier shoulder strap and the shoulder strap on the rat pack if you want to use them. Obviously they, they encapsulate them both and then when you flip the pack over they, it, the, uh, the velcro just lets, opens itself up. It's, it's all loop lined so it sticks, it sticks on inside there but they're not entirely required. Got a nice little grab handle on the top. The top is a roll top closure which is interesting. I asked First Beer about this specifically and basically I said, you know, is this, uh, is this a, like a, a decision made design-wise for, for maritime users? They said yes, they have a lot of uh, end users, shall we say, that work in marine maritime environments who they make AOR pattern kit for. You've got this roll-top closure, it's a bit slower than just one zip because you have to grab each tube and then you can actually get at the contents of the pack. Then closing it down, you've got a sort of maneuver each tube into place. It's not as clumsy as I make it look, I'm just a bit of a retard. That's all good, that's the pack on your back. So what's what's all the, you know, what's what's the fucking, what's the hashtag game changer that's going on here? Let me, let me don this rig for a second and I'll get back to you. So obviously, once you've got it on, there's your vet around the back. One thing I think is a disadvantage is you've got these tubes here for the pack which are right next to the tubes for the armor so if you grab like two inches to to your, the right or left or whatever all of a sudden you're releasing your whole armor away when actually only you only meant to uh flip your pack over i think under duress you could do that uh, some people are sitting there thinking oh i never do that that's fucking stupid well you know when you're getting shot at see how you do similar story with the shoulder ones in terms of like quick release from the carrier if you were fucking on fire or drowning or whatever um what you don't want to do is just release your pack and then you're still like why the fuck am i still in my armor and i'm sinking to, to my death um but you know if you do it then you can just grab the other ones you've lost about a second it's not the end of the world it's just a slight design flaw but there isn't really many other ways it could be done so there you go that aside once you've got the tubes for the vet release the side straps grab your rat tail Bet comes over the top, easy as that. Then you can open up your roll top. You can get at your uh, spare fucking grenade, night vision, whatever the hell it is. There's no actual organizer pockets inside of it, but it's not a massive bag anyway. Um, these, these plate carrier mounted bags tend not to be. By the way, you've now got your gear all in your front. On this side, you've got a quite handy zippered pocket. It's quite shallow, it only goes to there. If you see that, it's about there. Um, which means you have a little bit less storage, but actually when you've, when you've got it in this configuration, you just want to get at stuff, that's quite handy because it's not going to slip all the way down to the base of the back. You also got this PALS webbing here at the bottom, so you can switch that mesh beaver tail around this side, or they make pouches so you can fit 
two rifle magazines just here so you flip the pack over so if you've used all the mags on your front and you know you're in fucking real bad real bad times going down um flip over your your bet there's more ammo as soon as you're done getting out whatever it is you need to get out once your roll top's closed again boom just like that side straps come back around you can quite you can fairly easily locate your side straps again i think don't do what i did and lose the rat tail strap but it's easy enough to recover stick that back on and then when you need your pack again side straps off rat tail boom there you go done to my mind actually being able to just flip that over like so is just it's so much handier than having either than having one of these fixed pals mounted bags it's just simply just so much more logical i'll leave a link to the first beer web store where you can pick one of these up for yourself and check it out it does have its it does have its little niggles but the main feature the, the thing it gives you the ability to get that stuff that's on your armor without taking your armor off or when you're in a vehicle you can just flip it over okay camera batch dried on me super fast yesterday and then i lost the light so we'll wrap up now overall I think if you specifically want a plate carrier mounted backpack type solution like this, this is a really strong contender. There are some nails with it. I would probably run it without the beaver tail um, purely because it just has a tendency to for these G hooks to come off when it's empty. Or well, that's what I've found anyway. You do have to have a first beaver plate carrier to use one. So if you don't, that's um, that's obviously a bit of an issue. However, as far as I'm aware, the features that this gives you are pretty unique. I don't know of anything else that does the same thing as this pack. So, as I say, pertinent links will be down in the description. Uh, if you are into all the social media jazz, I am able to post on uh, Facebook and Instagram a lot easier than I can make YouTube videos. Um, so uh, check those links out. If you want to see more gear videos, consider subscribing. Thank you for watching. I hope you find the product interesting. I certainly did. Cheers for coming by, and I'll see you next time.